Hey everybody, I'm Tyler. And I'm Thaw Steve. And we're going to be looking at the uh, teams that built Robot in three days uh, for the 2022 game Rapid React. Uh, quite a few uh, that attempted. Some uh, were able to complete a robot, some were not. Uh, so we're going to be breaking down ones that we were able to see at least a decent amount of uh, areas demonstrated. Uh, by the way, one of the teams that you're seeing up here right now, this is actually 4788. They actually built a robot in three days for the 2018 game, which I think is really cool. We're not going to count this uh, in our count and our rankings, but... A really cool thing for uh, another robot to do as well. So we have seven teams that we're going to be uh, talking about uh, on here. As mentioned, there are some teams that, that didn't make the cut because we couldn't find enough about them at the time of this recording. Uh, also mentioned as well, too, we know that the EveryBot will be coming out soon from 118. Definitely looking forward to seeing that. So keep an eye out for that as well. Let's break down real quick uh, how we're going to be uh, ranking and looking at these teams. We have a few different areas that we are uh, scoring between one and five with five being uh, the best end of it and one being on the lower end of the spectrum. So to break those down, we have uh, easy to build. Uh, is this something uh, that other teams can easily replicate? Are there features and functions that we believe that teams can replicate for things? Practicality, can teams take this and build something better uh, from it? So if they want to improve upon it, uh, of this design, can they take something and, and truly uh, do more with what it is? Uh, reliability, is this something we could actually see on the field actually play? Uh, is it going to die during the middle of a match or anything like that? Uh, and then specifically performance, will it actually perform in the field? So there's a difference between how it, like, will it die versus is it going to actually score points uh, and could it be a contributor to an alliance? And the way I always look at that is, uh, could it be uh, like a first or second pick robot on an alliance? Uh, doubtful that it's going to be an alliance captain at this point. Uh, wow factor, how cool is it? Is how cool is something that was shown, uh, that was demonstrated on screen that teams can, like, uh, that really attract teams to it. I think what we'll see in here is with the seven teams, uh, there are kind of three tiers that these teams fall into. Uh, you know, our first couple ones are definitely ones we have lower score, and then we have a few mid tier. And then uh, there's two teams that really stick out on the top. Your destination for first content updates and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at Kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. And at number seven, we have coming out of Michigan, the Zone for Engineering uh, Mentors with the overall average of 2.4. Both of us rated this uh, 2.4 uh, and actually had identical ratings for this. This is the only team that we had identical ratings. Uh, break it down a little bit for me. So yeah, so this team has the Andy Mark drive base and a lot of rookie teams and a lot of other R3D teams have been using this drive base. Uh, they also just have a regular uh, wooden hood for the flywheel. So you can easily just make that from a CNC with regular planks of wood. And they also have a those typical uh, intakes that drop over the the bumpers and you can just drive up, pick up the cargo. And they also have a one stage climber that they made with PVC piping. Yeah. And we didn't, there was some aspects that we weren't fully able to see. This was one of the teams on the border of, did we have enough info to actually create something or not? Uh, there was another very short video they posted of it uh, shooting for things. So we determined we got at least enough out of things. So uh, let's talk about some race. Obviously an easier robot to build uh, for teams. We believe, uh, you know, made out of wood using some very basic kit of parts for things. So that that's nice, no doubt, but everywhere else kind of low and not definitely not a wild factor by any means. Uh, we didn't really see much in regards to performance other than a couple shots. And you yeah. know, I, I question if this uh, this whole thing is going to kind of hold together during the uh, middle middle of a match. Yeah, with their climber right now, the video you're currently showing, it seems a little bit loose. So kind of worried that if it's just going to break during a match, especially since it's made out of wood, wood can break. So well, the, the climber's not made well. out of wood itself, but the rest of the, the robot, yeah. Yeah, but the climber's made out of PVC. PVC can bend as well, so. Yeah. Anything could happen. And, and we just didn't see any demos of it, right? That's really what it comes yeah, down no. to on this. So, exactly. uh, so Zone for an Engineering Mentors, uh, right, wrapping up with the ranking of 2.4. Up next is Pride of the North coming out of the University of North Dakota. Uh, total, total overall average ranking of uh, 2.5. A little bit more uh, out of this video, but not seeing really a whole lot demonstrated necessarily in these videos as well. Yeah, so one thing that kind of I personally 
did not like from the spot is the entire shooter going forward. Uh, that seems a bit more complicated for rookie teams to do. Uh, involves a b bit more pneumatics, and rookie teams don't have much experience with pneumatics. Pneumatics does take some time, especially from personal experience. Um, the climber seems pretty basic, just a regular elevator, but at an angle. Uh, there would definitely be some tuning required for that. But overall, the hood being able to move out of the robot seemed a little bit weird to me and a bit janky, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, you know, a couple things. Like that. I like the idea that they're going for the one point. I think, you know, they're probably one of the only R3D teams that did that. And I think it's very important for teams to consider uh, the one point shot as well. Uh, but everything mm -hmm. else, once again, not a whole lot demonstrated necessarily for things. This is a reveal video and it's more just kind of an overview. You don't really see anything yeah. actually fully happen. Uh, and, and that, that makes it tough to judge for something like that. I agree. This, uh, when I first saw this, I'm like, okay, intake wise, I'm like, all right, it could be all right. But then I saw that they're using, you know, some sort of a uh, slide to, to pull it out, pull it back in. That just seems yeah. way overly complicated uh, for what it, for what it needs to be. So uh, you and I both have this uh, very, very close. Uh, I, I rated them uh, just slightly lower than what you did on here, but an overall average of uh, 2.5. Yeah, this this that we're seeing on screen right here, This I just don't get this, I guess, on this. And maybe I'm missing something for it, but for what the robot could be, I think there's a lot of different ways that you could do it simpler and, and more effectively as well. Yeah. All right, so that's going to wrap up Pride of the North, currently in sixth place with a rating of 2.5. In our number five spot is the uh, Phantom team coming out of University of Michigan. Uh, jumping up a little bit in rankings, this is we're starting to hit closer to kind of our mid-tier teams with a total average of three. Yeah, so as far as we were able to see, they didn't have a full robot review of video, but they were working on their climb. Uh, They're planning on doing a uh, the two the second rung, as most are in uh, RA three D teams are doing. Uh, they're planning on shooting from the hub, and they're planning on doing the sh uh, two-point shooter, as uh, you can you saw earlier. Uh, overall, it seems pretty accurate, and seems their uh, robot will be able to do a lot of things that rookies will also be able to replicate. Yeah, definitely an easier to build robot out there, and that's where they got higher marks. And sometimes there's, you'll notice there's a little bit of dichotomy. Sometimes the higher end robots are not as easy to build. I don't think that necessarily is that applies as much with this robot in three days that we've seen from different teams. But, you know, looking at uh, some other uh, aspects, I had them rate a, a bit lower than what you did uh, on this overall. But a couple things that I question is, once again, the performance coming out of it. We didn't see a whole lot, you know, happen in regards to demonstrations for things. Um, the reliability couple, couple things looking a little bit janky to me yeah. uh, on this, but you know, like I said, it's easier to robot the build. So I think there's, there's definitely some good nuggets that teams can take out of this team uh, and look to apply for the team. And that I definitely do appreciate uh, for them doing, I thought they did a pretty good job uh, demonstrating some of the basic features and capabilities and that I like, we just didn't really see much of it happen necessarily. Yeah. I mean, they do have a, the Andy Mark drive base. So uh, rookie teams can use that and build from there. Uh, that's one thing that RN3D is really good for. They use kit apart stuff, and teams can just look at it and be like, hey, this, here's a good idea. Let's use this. Yeah, and uh, you know, looking at uh, some of their things for a climber and stuff too, some good concepts demonstrated once again for teams uh, to look at. So overall, not a bad attempt uh, by the University of Michigan here. Uh, they've been around for a few years as well too, so uh, I look forward to seeing if they're maybe going to publish a couple other things from their team, but at the time of this recording, uh, they sit in fifth place uh, with a total average of three. In number four, we have IUPI, the per Purdue School of Engineering, with a total average of 3.4. Yeah, so this team, this robot actually was giving me some Infinite Recharge esque vibes. Yes. Uh, it has a tall robot. Uh, kind of reminds me of my high school robot in 2020. We have a tall bot. We have uh, over the bumper intake, uh, hook climbers. Very 2020 esque robot. Um, able to do almost everything. So it's it's a decent robot. Uh, teams can easily replicate this as well. Yeah, I 100% agree with the ease of build of this. This is something that. I really do think teams can learn from and uh, uh, take for their own. I think, I mean, this to me almost is like, almost like an every bot, right? It's like an every bot that can yeah. shoot high. Like, I don't know what every bot's going to be coming out with necessarily. They typically have done a low goal score, so I'd expect that. But if every bot were to make a 
a high hub scoring machine. This is kind of what I would envision out of something like that. And, and that I really like for it. I mean, the intake is very basic, but uh, Tussie, if as, as you mentioned on there, I agree with you. I think this robot could actually play infinite recharge. It literally yeah. looks like an infinite recharge robot. If you just make the indexer a little bit smaller to fit the, the power cells from infinite recharge, this can easily play infinite recharge. Yeah. Um, and some other aspects of this, uh, the intake uh, being the initial kind of, it, it just drops down and stays that way, but the flexible intake yeah. with that, I like that. I think that's really neat. A um, couple other things, you know, from a wow factor, not a whole lot there necessarily because it's, it's, it's a basic robot, right? It, that I yeah. would expect for a lot of things. Uh, performance wise, uh, actually, you know, I actually rated them a little bit lower, uh, as I'm looking at this again, I, I think I need to rate them a little bit higher for that. So I'm going to give them an extra point than I think what I would before, uh, because they are able to do some pretty good cycles for that. I'm actually, uh, kind of impressed, uh, as I look at this again, um, it's hard to see what the accuracy is because it is off screen, uh, yeah. for something like that. But, uh, overall, you know, I, I think IUPI, uh, made a very solid robot here and, and definitely, uh, things that I think teams especially that are lower resource teams can look at and say hey i could build something like this yeah this like you said it's very easy to build again 2020 esque but we're all still a pretty good robot and that's going to lead iupi in our number fourth spot in our number three spot is going to be kettering university the bulldogs uh, this is a team that i was out uh filming so uh whenever i look at these i do of course try to take as objective approach as possible but you know keep that in mind disclaimer this is something that fun uh, filmed as well. Uh, but we do have them uh, just edging out IUPI with a total average of 3.5. Yeah, so again, uh, Andy Mark and uh, Andy Mark Drive Base, uh, they have a tall robot, uh, and it's pretty, in my opinion, pretty janky. But uh, I wouldn't think that they need a big, tall robot like they are showing off right now. But it seems pretty accurate. Uh, they have an Andy Mark climber, uh, the climber in a box, and that worked as well to get to the second rung. But overall, I didn't like how it was pretty big, like you're, like it's showing right now. The structure is pretty big. But overall, the system of when intaking to the flywheel is actually pretty nice. And also, this also gives me some infinite recharge vibes as well. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. I mean, there's two things. You know, I'll probably be the biggest critic since I was there as well too, right? But uh, to yeah. me, a couple things uh, that, that stood out to me that I just maybe thought were unnecessary uh, with this robot. And, and one you mentioned on there, like, it, it, this could hold five cargo. I don't really understand the need for something like yeah. that, right? I think there, there could have been a, a little bit more in regards to that. Um, the they definitely had some issues uh, with the poly cord uh, holding that in place, but I think that's a pretty easy fix overall. Um, the one other thing I think is interesting though is that you'll see in in when they show off a a, a new climber coming up here is that they they kind of need to shave off a couple extra inches off the robot because right now it doesn't fit underneath the low rung. Uh, so they have to drive to the side uh, to, to climb for it. I, I think they could fix that as well, too, uh, but things to know. Uh, one other thing, actually, I, I want to go back on this video real quick. Um, this short shooter concept, I actually kind of wish they would have went with this and stuck with this yeah. because I think that would have been pretty unique uh, to show off, hey, you know, you can do a low a low scoring robot, especially if they would be shooting up against, like, the fender area sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm glad that there was at least a concept for it, but I actually wish that that would have been the robot uh, instead of going the, yeah. the taller tower. I get that you don't want to have defense played against you, but you know, once again, this is robot in three days or not necessarily having uh, opponents against you for this. Exactly. Uh, in my opinion, if you had a shorter bot, you could just drive up, up to the hub and just shoot from there. You don't really have much defense to deal with. So I would personally have gone for a short bot, but overall this bot pretty big can hold five cargo. Don't know why, but, it's still a pretty good robot. Yeah, and the one last thing I'll mention is we just saw that on screen as I go back here is that it is actually uh, pretty accurate. When they were testing, uh, we were actually able to shoot pretty accurately. This is actually shooting from the launch pad, and it actually was quite accurate uh, for that. So uh, definitely from a scoring perspective, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for it. Uh, able to do the mid-run uh, fairly easily, a little bit time-consuming, but you know, not as long as some of the teams will see that are looking for the traversal rung as well. So, uh, so Kettering kind of is right in the middle of the pack for ratings on there uh, with a 3.5 uh, for that. Most of the ratings are threes and fours between the two of us. Uh, so a good build by Kettering. Uh, could they maybe done a little bit more for a couple things? Absolutely. Um, can teams still learn from this? I, I think they can as well. Yeah, for sure. So that leads Kettering uh, just edging out in our number three spot. So these last two teams, this was very close. These are definitely uh, two teams that we believe are in the upper echelon 
of uh, Robot in Three Days for for the Rapid React Challenge out there. Uh, and just falling by 0.1 points with a total average of 3.9 is the Zookeepers coming out of University of Missouri. Yeah, so Zookeepers, they are able to do a lot of stuff. And one thing that I really loved from this team was their climber. Their climber is able to go from the mid-rung all the way to the traversal. They didn't show from the traversal since they didn't have the entire truss built, but they're able to go from the mid-rung to the high rung, which is something a lot of teams, from what I have seen, are wondering how to do. They did have some issues, uh, like their gearbox snap after they were able to do a successful climb, but there's they definitely put in the comments and on their Chief Delphi post their thread of how they're able, how you guys can fix that. So that's a great way to let teams know how to fix issues that they experienced. But they're able to they're able to shoot to the uh, to the high hub, get the two points. They're able to shoot from the hub as well. And they're also, they're also able to shoot from actually the second the top hub and the low hub uh, if you just adjust the RPM of the flywheel. But overall, the climb is one thing that grabbed my attention immediately. Yeah, I mean, no doubt from a wild wow factor, um, this is something that obviously a lot of teams have gravitated to to get some examples of what's going on. Uh, I appreciate as well, as you mentioned too, that uh, they also document their failures as well and, how to, and their ideas on how to fix them. I think that's a huge part of Robot in Three Days. Really like that a lot. Um, you know, for me, I think the only thing on my end is, you know, I rated their performance a, a bit lower, and that's just because, yes, can they get to the traversal rung? Yeah, in theory, can they do it within a two-minute, 30-second match? That's yet to be seen uh, as this is sped up, as you can see on screen. So that, that's really my only uh, kind of cr critique of the robot, not necessarily the team. I think it's more the robot of like, hey, this is a cool concept but it's not something that is necessarily proven as being practical uh, for what a match is going to be. The robot's very practical, I think, but I think for a performance yeah. perspective, uh, you know, are you going to pick a team where maybe that's all they do an entire match is just climb? Maybe, maybe at a regional that's possible, right? Uh, but later on, who, who knows for something like that? But still a fantastic robot uh, overall. Uh, I didn't see as much in regards to the, the shooting. Did you see a lot of uh, videos with them shooting cargo? Uh, they do have a video specifically for the shooter. They don't have the shooter on the robot, but they are able to yeah. shoot, like I said, to the two-point hub or the one-point hub if you just adjust the RPM. Yeah, but, but that's my thing is that it, yeah, the shooter itself was really cool. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, we don't exactly have that demo on here right now, uh, but putting it on the robot and actually having it follow through and shoot all the way, that's kind of what I'm looking for for something like that. Yeah. But still, Zookeepers, uh, kudos to you. Great uh, demonstrations that you had this year. Uh, and you... Uh, firmly earned the number two spot, uh, just missing out on the, our next team. And in our number one spot, uh, just edging out our number two team with an average score of four, is going to be Snow Problem from the University of Minnesota. Uh, overall at score of four, once again, edging out uh, by point one, taking our number one spot. Yeah, so they have a really huge intake, but that helps them to be able to big, pick up the big cargo pieces. They also have a really... Uh, small bot on the on wide they're really thin which is really nice they're able to go around a lot of places their climb was a bit interesting from what i can see it's just a little a bar that goes 360 but is able to go from the mid rung to the high rung which is actually really something i didn't ever think of uh but they're also able to go for the two points on the hub a very interesting bot and it's 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 it, it's really nice yeah, I mean, this is a robot that uh, looks like it would be at a regional uh, to me. This, yeah. is, this is a robot where, like, if I were to see this, I would think this is built by by a team that is competing uh, on the field. Uh, and that's not just because of their aesthetics necessarily, but just the overall structure and how it's built on there. And you, and you see that, that climber working, definitely a cool wow factor uh, for that. And uh, would love to see, you know, from a timing-wise, it looks like it's able to do this fairly quickly, uh, which I definitely like a lot. Uh, you know, a couple a couple things on the other thing from a performance perspective, just a, a, a little bit lower because their shooter uh, didn't seem to be completely accurate uh, on the word. Like they seem to always miss one out of two each time. And I'm not sure that that's because yeah. they shot too fast or what they did for that. But uh, definitely, I mean, th this robot's awesome. Uh, the uh, intake I'm a big fan of. I don't think it's too complicated. Maybe machining might be a little bit complicated for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. 
but overall, you know, we still think this robot is very practical to build and very easy. And there's ways that I think teams can improve upon this. And as you mentioned, I really like their packaging a lot uh, for their robot. It just seems overall to be a very well uh, built machine for that. So uh, kudos to Snow Problem. And, and of course, you know, all the teams in RA3D, it's one of those things where, you know, we can rank and we say, okay, this team's good, this team's not as good, right? And that's really not the point. It's more of exactly. how do we feel that this could potentially perform in the field? How could it inspire teams? Because that's really the spirit of what RA3D is, right? How do we how do we inspire teams? How do we help educate teams so they can take something and build it better? And remember that teams that this was built in three days, right? All these robots you saw were built in well, at least theoretically three days uh, for all this. And you need to go and build something better. You can use this as a platform for inspiration for things, but go and build something better. Build your own, iterate your own design for things. That's what we want to see come out of your teams. Uh, but want to give a, a big shout out to all the RA3D teams. We hope to see more videos coming out uh, very soon so teams can use that for inspiration as well. Uh, but congratulations once again to Snow Problem for being rated our number one RA3D team for Rapid React. Thanks a lot for listening. Let us know in the comments below how you would rank these teams and what their ratings are. I'm sure they're different than what ours are, so we'd love to hear back from you. So put that in the comments and let us know. They'll wrap it up for us here at Fun. We'll talk to you next time. See you then. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.